All right, welcome back to NorCal 715. Look what I've got today. This is an industrial LED bulb. It's uh, supposed to be rated uh, to be equivalent to about a 150 watt incandescent bulb. And it does show it's uh, 24 watts power consumption and it's uh, compatible with a 120 volts to 277 volts. And uh, say not used for dimmers, suitable for damp locations and suitable for use in enclosures. Uh, this one happens to have a problem which is how I came about getting it. It certainly got a bunch of little individual LEDs in there. So uh, let's tackle it, tear it apart, see what's inside. Oh, I've got a socket hooked up to it. I'm just gonna plug it in here. We'll see what happens. Uh, some of the LEDs appear to be lighting very brightly. I do see uh, a couple of them are out on that string. I try to cover this one up and you can see that some of the LEDs on the other uh, string are lighting. I don't see any lighting on this one, none on that one, none on that one, none on that one, and finally none on these. What about up top? Kind of hard to tell the way it's flashing. Well, let's uh, let's dive into it, see what's inside. So it's got four screws that hold the plastic cover on, so we're just going to take those out. Okay, got it open. There's the guts of it. It's got a little switch mode power supply in there. And I see a, uh, well, it's all potted, but there's a single fat hiding in here. And I see a cooling fan up in there as well uh, to get some air through this aluminum heat sink to draw the uh, heat away from the LEDs. So uh, what I'm gonna do is try to power it up here and uh, we'll measure some voltages and see what's going on. Okay, here we go, gonna plug it in. And you can see it flash in here. Let's try to measure the voltage coming out of the power supply. It's going up to just over 50 volts on the peak, coming back down into the 30s. Let's put it on min max. 53.5 volts, 53.8 is the highest voltage, 54. So we'll get rid of the min max and we'll check some of these where the LEDs are not working and I'm still getting voltage there. Up here, you may have some bad LEDs, just like in some of those uh, LCD TVs you saw me troubleshoot. So I've got my voltmeter over here on the diode check. And so I'm just gonna go across each LED here, change the polarity. And we do get a little light. I get nothing on the third one. So it appears that one may be open. Let's check one of the other rows. This one's got a big black spot in it. I don't know if you can pick it up on the camera or not. Nope. Mm, that get chipped apart. I would say that one's bad. So we know for sure this one right here is bad. Oop, it came right apart, no questions asked. And let's see. Ooh, that one's awfully dim. This one does not light. Let's see if it chips open as easy. So I'm wondering if it's just going into undercurrent limiting. 
I just wonder if I short across these three LEDs and fire it back up, we'll have four good strips if it'll stay on at that point. It'll be an interesting experiment. So I'm curious if these will even come off the board with a little bit of heat. Because they're on an aluminum heat sink. And it's working on it. There we go. So I'm just gonna take a big ball of solder and just try to bridge the gap. There we go. I'm gonna try to do it on the other two as well. Get some heat in there. Got one pad off. Yeah, it's thinking about it. There we go. All right, we'll get a big ball of solder on that one as well. Well, let's plug it in and see what happens. And it now lights up and stays on. So it definitely was going into an undercurrent situation. So I'm gonna go test every other LED and find out if any of the other LEDs are exhibiting the same symptoms which I certainly expect in every row there's going to be at least one that's bad. All right, here's the next next strip. I notice this one's got a big black spot in it. No light. Another one with a black spot. No light on that one as well. Before I tore this uh, apart, this cover was absolutely full of bugs. This is a bulb that's not in an enclosure, so it's out in the open. And this thing had completely filled up with bugs, and I think the cooling fan probably wasn't doing anything. And I believe that it probably overheated. So, uh... I'm just going to go ahead and pull all these LEDs off. We'll just put solder balls across them for now. And uh, maybe look at getting some replacement LEDs. I know uh, each one of these bulbs is just under $100. So if it took $5 in LEDs to repair it, it would definitely be cost effective. So I'm using the Fluke 117 multimeter. And it has a low impedance input, about 3,000 ohms. And I see on this one strip, they're barely lit except for this one. So I have it in the low impedance mode right now and I'm just going to put that across it and the rest of them light and I'm showing 9.6 volts on the ohm meter right now in voltage so about 10 volts is being dropped across that one LED. I found an easier way to remove these is just to strip off the body. Get right down to the pads that way I don't have to melt the plastic to get this off. And the pads come right off the board at that point. I'll put a nice little solder blob across there and bridge those. Now I'm just going to do the rest and we'll see what happens. Okay, so now that I've got the LEDs repaired, 
And so there's uh, eight of them in each line. So there's 16 total on each board. And then up on top here, hard to see, but there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And where the wires come in, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And that one center one is part of this group. So they've got these all in parallel. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna disconnect one of these leads that comes from the power supply unit here. And I'm gonna put my amp meter in line and we'll measure the current to the LEDs. And so we'll try to figure out based on the voltage that we have here going into each strip and the current that we measure exactly uh, how many watts and light that we're getting out of this. So I'm just gonna take and uh, unsolder one of these leads here. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and hook up my meter here. I've got them, uh, I'm connected in series now with the one lead down here, uh, back to the point where I unsoldered it. So we're just gonna break the circuit and measure the current. Uh, I'm estimating probably in the five to 700 milliamp range. It seems to be a pretty standard amount for these LED type lamps. So let's go ahead, I'm on the 10 amp scale right now. Actually the six amp scale. So let's plug it in and see what we get. Uh, about 440 milliamps, a little bit less than I expected. Now the uh, current shouldn't change at all. This should be a current limiting power supply. So even if we took out multiple LEDs, um, it's gonna limit the current to the same amount. So ultimately each LED receives the same amount of current. Now it will adjust the voltage accordingly. And these things do have kind of a little brain box in them where if the voltage is too low or too high, it's gonna shut down. Or if the current is too low or too high, it's going to shut down as well. Wires are very short here. Next, we'll go ahead and fire it up and look at the actual voltage. Forty-four point three volts at approximately four hundred and forty milliamps. And as you can see, as the LEDs are warming up, they're becoming more efficient, where it takes less voltage to achieve the same amount of light. So the power supply is current or is voltage limiting to keep the current constant right now. So what we know is. 44.2 volts, and we have about 440 milliamps, or 0.44 amps. So based on that and some simple math, we should be able to come up with how many watts this power supply is delivering to those LEDs. So based on the calculations, we're drawing about, or delivering about 20 watts of power to the LEDs, which is pretty good to make that much light. So that means the power supply has got to be using about five watts in wasted heat. That's still incredibly efficient because we only have, I think the uh, thing said it was a 24 watt input. So we're only losing four watts in essence. Um, I don't have my uh, power meter with me right now, so I can't plug it in and actually measure the number of watts it's consuming and the power factor. Um, it will be interesting to see how efficient this thing is and what the power factor actually is rated at. So anyhow, let's go ahead under full load now. I'll get the meter connected back up and uh, we'll try to measure uh, the voltage across uh, just one of the LEDs and see what we're looking at. Hopefully it won't blind me too much. Wow, really hard to see. 2.93 volts, so approximately three volts per LED. So now we're drawing about, or it's uh, consuming three volts per LED. All right, just did some real quick math here. And uh, we've got 12 sets of 16 LEDs. So we have 192 total LEDs in the lamp. And so approximately we're delivering 36 milliamps per LED set times the 12 sets would make our 440 milliamps or 0.44 amps altogether. And so if we're drawing three volts per LED times 16 LEDs, that works out to very close to 48 volts, which is what we're seeing 44 volts altogether. 
and uh, I realized that a couple of these have uh, two bad LEDs per set, and they're actually gonna uh, consume a little more current than the strips that only have one LED defective. Anyhow, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video on the industrial LED lamp with 192 LEDs in it. It really does put out quite a bit of light. Very hard to uh, to express over the camera how much light this thing actually produces. Anyhow, you can follow me on Twitter at NorCal715. That is the best way. If you have any questions, uh, send me a direct message and I will do my best to try to answer that when I get some time. Also, if this or any of my other videos have helped you, uh, please consider making a donation. On my YouTube homepage, there is a PayPal donate button or you can simply type paypal.me slash NorCal715 into your web browser. Hey everybody, have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.